Hello everyone! Welcome to another episode of Zen and the City. How is everyone doing? How are you? Let me know in the comments below. I want to hear your news. This is the third episode of Zen and the City and today we're going to talk about how London made me a minimalist. Well, you know, minimalist, but not in the strictest sense. We're going to talk about how living in London for several years has changed my mind in terms of the things I own and trying to possess less things, have less things, be more mindful of what I put in my house and being more of a minimalist in general. So, yeah, let's talk a little bit about that because I find it very interesting and I find a lot of patterns in terms of most of my friends who live in London as well think very similarly. And I think there are a few reasons that have to do with London that pushed us to this um, situation and this mindset. So, first things first, you know that London is very crowded, right? So, the houses are very crowded as well. Um, people live in very, very um, small spaces. Some people live in tiny spaces as well. And people share houses. It's very common in London for people to live with a few flatmates. So, as you can imagine, you don't have a whole flat or house to yourself usually you have just your room and then some common space in the house like the kitchen or if you're lucky enough a living room Ooh -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> hooray so that means that you don't have a lot of space to expand and you don't have a lot of space to keep your stuff uh, you don't have storage. Oh, by the way, it's not very common in London for houses or flats to have some storage space. We don't have a basement where people keep, keep stuff. Nope. We don't have any attics. Um, we don't have um, any spaces in the flat apart from usually a tiny cupboard with a door that's Basically, the um, it's not a proper storage cupboard because that's where they keep the electricity, gas, boilers and all of that usually. So if there's any space left for you to put, like even a suitcase, you'll be lucky. So yeah, having only your shared spaces and your bedroom to, to storage everything you own, then you can imagine that it's pretty, pretty difficult to own a lot of stuff living here in London. So that's one thing that um, people here have in common um, because that's how life in London is. And that's why people don't tend to own a lot of stuff. They And basically they tend... To not buy their own furniture. Um, because where would you put them? And the other thing uh, is that most houses or rooms or flats you rent in London are furnished. Most of the spaces you rent are furnished. Some of them are partly furnished. It's um, more uncommon to find something that's completely unfurnished. So you can imagine that people don't own furniture because they move into a place and then it's already furnished. So they just bring their clothes and kitchenware or whatnot to be, and that's it. That's the end of the story. So it definitely helps. But then on the other hand, every time you move, you don't feel like home. You feel like you're living temporarily. <laughs> in someone's space which is kind of weird but that's another another matter to discuss another time probably the other thing is 
uh, people move around in London way too much. So moving houses quite often is a, a characteristic of London, of living in London. Because London is so massive and people move, um, they, they change their jobs as well quite often, um, then they tend to move houses as well whenever they change their job, for example, because London is so big and if you end up working on the other side of London, then you might as well move there, otherwise it's going to be impossible with a commute. Um, commuting takes a lot of time in London, even though we have one of the best uh, transport networks in the world. But still, it's it's big. It's big. It's like, you can imagine, like, almost 9 million people living here. So, yeah, I mean, it's reasonable. So, uh, as I was saying, people are moving around way too much. Um, that means that the average uh, period somebody stays in a house or flat is, I would say, like, one to two years. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> this is based on my own experience um, and what I've seen and what I've heard. But I say like one to two years, um, then they, they move house. So naturally, when you are moving houses so often here, it's not very easy to move a lot of stuff with you. So the lighter you travel, the easier it gets. And then it's also very expensive because it, the cost of living here is very expensive, as you know. So getting a moving company, a removal company is also very expensive. So if you're doing everything by yourself and you're carrying your stuff, moving your stuff uh, to a new house by yourself, it's going to be even harder. So people try to avoid buying big furniture or um, a lot of uh, stuff, at least bulky things, so that they wouldn't have to move them around the city. Um, and then, with every move, uh, if you have moved uh, at least one time in your lives, you can feel me on that. Every uh, house move, you get into decluttering naturally because you pack everything you take everything out of its place so you see all of the things you've been hiding in cupboards and in drawers so you see whatever junk <laughs> you've been hiding all these years uh, and you forgot about it so as you pack things you tend to also declutter and as you unpack you tend to declutter again at least that's what happened with me uh, the last few times I moved and it's natural um, and it's normal and I think it's the greatest thing and it's the greatest opportunity for somebody to declutter so if you have to move please please get into decluttering <laughs> It's going to save your life and it's going to change your life. So, yeah, um, decluttering, decluttering. Oh, I love decluttering so much. It feels so good when you see everything you own, you go through it, you see what you really use in your daily life, you see what you don't. Um you give things away, you might end up giving things that somebody else needed, which personally it makes me feel great. Uh, it's amazing whenever I do that. I, I love like um, giving stuff so to someone else that they're going to find it useful. Uh, also giving away things to charity loads of times from clothes to books to um, even like small furniture or um, kits and stuff. Uh, by the way, a very good tip if you live uh, in the UK, uh, if you have big things, or n not necessarily big, but anyway, if you have like a few things that you want to get rid of, 
um, quite quickly and uh, they're not getting sold on Marketplace or Gumtree or whatever, um, you can go online uh, to British Heart Foundation, which is a charity, and then you book a slot, you fill in a form and then you book a slot with them and they come and pick up everything for you from your doorstep or inside your house anyway and then they sell them for the charity um yeah you don't get to sell them which means that you're not gonna get some money back but if it's impossible for you to sell them or you don't want to get into this process then the british heart foundation is a very good choice a friend of mine told me about it and it helped me a lot in my last move because i had like a couple of huge furniture that were not getting sold so i gave them to charity and i feel good about it so yeah um also there are a few apps uh, where you can um, sell your old cvs pc cds DVDs, PC games, and books. Um, they buy them for a very, very, very small amount. But still, like if you have a lot of things to sell, why not check them on the app? You scan the barcode and you see like if they uh, want to buy them and how much for. This is how I have uh, given away like <laughs> boxes of books in the past, uh, just to declutter my bookcase. Um, yeah, I think these are all my tips for now. Um, maybe we can uh, make another podcast episode uh, specifically dedicated to decluttering because I love decluttering. Um, yeah, and I can tell you more about it. But back to how London became, uh, made me um, a minimalist. Um, of course, it's the way of living here that pushes you towards that and even if you want to um, keep a lot of things, a lot of stuff, it's impossible living in such tiny spaces. But then I personally had a few other influences as well uh, in my personal development uh, movement, uh, not movement, sorry, personal development uh, journey. Yeah, that journey, that's what I meant. Um, so, of course, first of all, it was Marie Kondo. Oh, I love Marie Kondo. I read her book before the Netflix TV series came out. Um, I knew about it. I had it in my list. I was like, oh, that's a good uh, time to read it. I think it was before or during the first staying at home period. Yeah, I think I read it. And oh my God, it's not... It won't like change your whole life drastically or it won't tell you like so many things you didn't know, but it gives you like good motivation to go through all, all of your stuff, like all of it. And this is, I think, where it all started for me. Um, oh, having time in my hands, obviously staying at home, for a few months and then reading such books like Marie Kondo's um, and then I started going through my stuff decluttering decluttering and this party never stopped and I still love it because I love the process and I love how it makes me feel so I do own <laughs> a lot less stuff now um, and I think watching too many videos of Matt Diavella and uh, Blay um, Lana Blakely as well. I love them both. They are minimalists, um, way bigger minimalists than I am. Uh, but it's not it's not a competition, and you shouldn't be comparing yourself to others. And it's not it's uh, minimalism is not an end goal. It's like it's. Uh, for me, it's the attitude and, and the mindset, you know, like trying not to hoard and try not to um, get stuck among so many things that you don't use and you don't love. Um, so it's not, it's how everyone can be like how much of a minimalist they want to be. That's what... I am advocating. Do you want, 
and and you can ditch the term minimalist altogether if it doesn't make you feel good anyway. It's the mindset that matters, as I said earlier. The mindset of trying to keep only the useful stuff, the necessary stuff, the stuff that you love, the stuff that make you feel good, even if they're not useful. You can get rid of all the rest and you can make some more space to breathe. It's going to make your life easier. It's going to be easier on the eyes. It's going to be easier for you to clean your house and know where everything is. Plus, it's going to create more space for you. Your house is going to feel bigger uh, naturally if you don't have if it's not that cluttered. Um, yeah, so I love uh, Mattia Vella and uh, Lana Blakely. I'm going to leave all these uh, channels down below in the description. And uh, once you get to the description, I'm going to leave also uh, a button to subscribe, a link to subscribe to my channel and also my Instagram account. Uh, you can follow me there and check all my other posts as well. Thank you very much. Um, also, the other thing I was thinking about uh, London having made me a minimalist is that, obviously, as you know, I'm an expert here. Um, I moved to London eight years ago. And what that means for me is that I had a base back home in Greece where I knew that this was always going to be my base and my house and my space that nobody's going to take away from me. And when you have that, you don't think about decluttering so much because you have the space, the space is there for you and it can hold all of your stuff and it can be like a storage space as well for when you're away. So you tend to hoard you hoard more easily and this is not good um <laughs> no but seriously i mean i it is a safe space for me to keep stuff that are precious to me um but that was also another reason why i could not keep stuff here in london because I move too much and I don't have a lot of space and I know that nothing is permanent here because I don't own a house or a flat. So that's normal, I think, and I see it in a lot of London experts as well. Um, yeah, now uh, in, in terms of how this changed me, as I said earlier, it was a process for me going through many stages, realizing every time what that gives me, how it makes me feel. Um, also going through um, a phase um, with minimalism, um, thinking about how much I consume, how much I buy, uh, if I need whatever I, I buy, or if I buy because I want to, for no good reason. Um, this was all like a self-development growth period for me, a self-development journey, uh, asking myself questions constantly around those things. What do you want to put into your house? Uh, will you... Um, Will you give away another item if you put in another item? Because you can't always like put in and put in and put in and bring and bring and bring. You need to let go of some things as well. And also, aha, uh -huh, I said the magic word, letting go. This was also an emotional period because you learn to let go. You do learn to detach from things. I was a person that... I was too emotionally attached on things. I tended to associate a lot of the things I own with situations or people. It was very hard for me to let go of them. So trust this process. Start small. 
if it sounds good for you. You you don't have to ever call yourself an, a minimalist. For me, it's the process of learning more about yourself and decluttering your life, not just your house, keeping only the things that are useful to you or that you love. That's the whole point of it. It's not only about things. It's a way of thinking. And plus, now that I think of it, you save a lot of money as well because you don't end up buying a lot of junk. <laughs> Am I right? So, yeah, that was the whole story. Uh, if you live in London, let me know what your experience was. I really want to hear it. Um, if you are living somewhere else, but you went through a similar phase, please, please put it in the comments below and share with us. Uh, I find it so, so interesting and I love having this conversation with people. I hope you like this uh, podcast episode. And before the next one, please subscribe on the red button down below and follow me on Instagram as well. Have a super duper good one. Bye.